All right, all. We got an interesting question today to tackle um, that oddly has something to do with what we just found with two wires, so let's dive in. The statement reads, A large parallel plate capacitor with uniform surface charge sigma on the upper plate and negative sigma on the lower plate is moving with a constant speed V, as shown. A. Find the magnetic field between the plates and above and below them. B. Find the magnetic force per unit area on the upper plate, including its direction. C. At what speed V would the magnetic force balance the electric force? All right, let's look at the diagram. We have two plates running parallel, and we see that they're moving to the right with speed V with the plus or minus sigma. Um, what we should know for this is that the magnetic field of a sheet, which we found using Ampere's law, um, is plus mu naught over two k, which is the uh, area sur which is the surface current density, um, for z less than zero and negative for z greater than zero. That right hand rule will come into effect again. And we know that since we have to find the force per unit area, we need the Lorentz force with the surface current density and the magnetic field. And that's given as an integral, so we'll just chop that up per unit area as needed. All right, so first we need to modify the solution uh, that we found for just a single plate um, and add it to this scenario. In the red, we see that the magnetic field of the top plate is mu naught two k going or pointing out of the uh, page when we're on top of that plate but going into the page when we're below the plate. Now, when we switch the sign uh, of the charge distribution, sigma, then the, area, then the uh, direction switch. So we see that above is going into the page, and for below, it's coming out of the page for the bottom plate. Pretty simple, but we'll go ahead and draw it out so we can see something. So for the top plate, this is a side view, and we see that we have a plus sigma on top, in the red and minus sigma on the bottom, which in the blue, we see that we're coming out of the page above the plate in red and out of the page below the plate on red, which we can uh, reason why that's important in the next slide. But here in between, we're going into the page below and into the page above, and they merge together. Uh, so we see that from the diagram that the field lines run out of the page on the outermost part of the sheets. They can't go anywhere else except merge down back into the middle. So anything outside of that, they just cancel out with one another. Uh, but in the middle, they run and join together. And we know that blue and red on the diagram come together to make purple. And that's because they add together in the middle. So we see that the B field is mu naught over 2K plus mu naught over 2K. And we uh, can see that adding those together gives us mu naught K. But what is K but the surface area times the velocity? I mean, the uh, sigma times the velocity because that's the current over the area. And so we're left with mu naught sigma V going into the page in between, which is what we saw in zero elsewise. Um. So that's important because now for the Lorentz force, we had it written as an integral, which is just summing up all the possible area that there is. So the force per unit area can just be written as F equal K cross B. Now that we know what B is, and we know that K is sigma V, we can apply the cross product, and now we can find what this is. Um, so since we're looking at the upper plate, we need the lower the field of the lower plate, which is mu naught uh, sigma v over 2 going into the page. So the force of the um, magnetic force per unit area is sigma v to the right, because that's where the current's moving, is to the right, crossed with mu naught sigma v over 2 into the page. And if you use the right-hand rule, that leads us with the resultant direction of up, but we see that we have mu naught sigma squared v squared over 2. Those squares will come to play in the next step. So now for part C, the electric field of the lower plate is sigma over 2 epsilon naught. We found that back in chapter 2 and 3. 
and the electric field per unit area, which we can do the same thing, QV, or uh, QE is the force. So we have sigma squared divided by 2 epsilon, but it's pointing down. So we know that they balance when we set them equal to one another, and by doing so, we get cancellation to the sigma squared and 2, leaving us with mu naught V squared equals 1 over epsilon naught, Solve that for V, and we get the speed of light again. And we just saw that we had a similar result in the case of two parallel wires. So it's good to see that these things are holding true for the two geometries and that we get the same conceptual landing point. And that's what allows us to generalize these theories to more dimensions.